Hello everyone and thank you again for joining us for another BFT Tech video. Uh, today we're actually going to be going over the highly requested uh, EcoSol setup. And EcoSol for BFT is actually our solar 24 volt setup. Uh, so let me begin uh, by going over our pre-wired setup. This is what comes in our kit. Uh, you will have uh, a 10 watt solar panel. Of course, you can have a max of th uh, three solar panels for 30. I'll go over this a little bit more in a second. We have uh, the EcoSol board inside. So this is your solar board. And then this is your Talia, uh, excuse me, Talia light board uh, that has taken place of the Libra ULR, okay? Of course, these are all your uh, connections for any accessories, uh, your solar power connections, photo connections. And of course, right over here is your motor connections. Uh, and right here is, of course, your first set of batteries, uh, which is your, you know, two 12 volt, uh, seven or nine amp hour batteries that comes with the system. Um, and of course, they're connected in series for 24 volts. All right. So let me go over a little bit on the solar panel. Again, if you remember, I mentioned uh, you can have a total of three. The kit only comes with one. So you would have to order the extra ones. Um, if you look right back here, um, it's actually a very simple little top, a water sealed top that you can pop off. I had it pre-popped off, that's why it came off that easy. Uh, but you have your negative and your positive clearly marked. Um, the reason they have two glands here, of course, is if you need to daisy chain them, so they would have to be hooked up in parallel if you're hooking three of them up. Um, of course, you know, I recommend some sort of a U-prong type connector for this. I just put this together for the video. Um, you know, so, and let's say you're just using one solar panel, you wanna make sure you cut a small piece off, stick it in the hole, and then, you know, just close this side off so it stays water sealed. Um, so this is our solar panel. Let me go over uh, this label. The reason I wanna go over this label on this side is because there's a few of them that made it out there that are actually for the Libra ULR. But don't fret, a lot of this information is still very pertinent. Um, like let's say for instance, the angle of your solar panel. Uh, one of the main things I wanna point out here is your motor two and motor one connections. Because the Libra board used to make the motor two, uh, the actual primary motor, that's why it's marked motor two. Of course, the new label is coming. I just wanna explain it to you guys just in case you get this box. So if you have one motor or one motor operation or the motor you want to open first, you wanna make sure you hook up to this motor two connection. Um, if you have two motors or a, a secondary motor, that would go on the motor one connection just below. Uh, this is if you have some sort of biparting, things like that. Um, of course, on this side, you just go in order from left to right um, to be able to you know, wire what each thing is. Of course, the solar panel goes in the first part. Uh, you wanna make sure your solar panel is giving you 37 to 41 uh, volts, all right? So that is very important. If your solar panel is not giving you 37 to 41 volts, you're not charging the system properly. And of course, everything else here is more or less self-explanatory. Um, I will go in depth over the lights a little bit more in a second, and this part will be changing with the new control board. Um, remote programming is also the same, so this, this is still very pertinent as far as that. I'll go over that at the end. Um, so let's actually talk about the EcoSol board. All right, if you look right over here, you will notice this is for where your single set of batteries are hooked up, okay? And then right below here, you will notice there's an extra set of prongs. Of course, you have your positive here and your negative on this side. And that's where you will connect a second set of batteries if you like, which now will bring me to my dip switches, right? So in order to use your second set of batteries, you have to make sure dip switch number one is actually in the on position, right? Um, without dip switch number one on, you will not be getting power to that spot. Of course, dip switch number two is for remote programming. You have to make sure dip switch number two is on to be able to program your remotes. And then three and four are your times uh, for, because basically this board sleeps, right? This board, you give it a remote activation, it wakes up and then sends the command over to the Talia light, right? So three and four actually delay the time of when that command is sent just to make sure your board is getting it right after it turns on. So you might have to play with three and four. Uh, the fastest setting is three up, four down, uh, but that might be too fast for some boards like the Giotto Berry Arm uh, as an example. Uh, let me go over our lights. Um, this light right here is low battery, right? So if you have three flashing lights, this would actually be uh, meaning that it's a uh, low battery. So you'd wanna check each battery individually. And remember, each battery has to be uh, plus or minus 0.7 from each other for it to work correctly, okay? If one battery has, you know, really high voltage and the other one is three or four volts below, 
the system's not gonna work correctly. So very important to make sure both batteries are 0.7 uh, plus or minus voltage from each other. All right, so again, if you see this light, this DL3 light flashing three times, that means you have low battery. This light is also for remote programming, which I will go over at the end. Um, then you have your DL4 light. This right here is actually your charging light. So if this light is on, the system is charging the batteries. Now, how do you know if the system's charging the batteries correctly? You would just disconnect the two cables that are going to the system, and you wanna make sure you're getting something like 27 volts. If you're not getting 27 volts after you disconnect it from the batteries, something's wrong there, all right? And then our last LED I'll bring here is your DL2 light. This one's important. You gotta make sure uh, you pay attention to this, and I'll explain why in a second. This light is actually for your JP14 jumper. And what that does is it applies constant power to your Talia board, all right? And that is so we can program, you know, we got the, the unit mounted. Of course, you wanna check out our Phobos video uh, here on top to go over mounting and programming. Uh, I will go over a quick programming now in a second. Let me get this jumper in, it's a weird angle, guys, sorry. All right. So if you notice that light is lit solid and that light specifically is telling you that your jumper is on JP14 and you're giving constant power to the board. You have your operator mounted already. Uh, now you are able to actually run through the quick setup. So, okay, one time, it'll say language. We're gonna select English. You select the language you would like. Type, of course, we're using a Phobos for demo, de uh, demo purposes. number of motors, we only have one connected. And of course, remember I have it connected on top of the model connectors, because this is motor one. All right, so we want it internal. Your preset, I want it to AR, automatic residential. I can go over that again, like I said in the other videos. Program, now it's ready to go. Now it's gonna to go to auto set. Run your auto set, three, two, one. Uh, again, if it's your first time running the auto set, it can take up to three and four times full open and closes. Uh, but of course we ran the auto set already, so we should just get one out of it. Um, I am gonna take this time now while it's running the auto set to explain. If anybody's familiar with BFT, you know what's coming next. You know it's uh, remote programming. Stop, do not program your remotes to this board, okay? Remember, this board goes to sleep. The only reason this board is on right now is because we have the dip switch on, giving it constant power. Um, so I'll wait for this to finish. It says okay, and like I told you, it goes to remote programming. No, no. All right, we push okay. End, and now it's showing C, the one motor we have connected is in the closed position. So that is good to go. I can now remove the jumper and now we will actually go into remote program and I'll explain that a little bit. Uh, you can leave the jumper on or jumper off. I'll take the jumper off just to show you how it works. Okay. Now remember I mentioned the DL3 light is for battery programming, but it is also for remote programming and you can program two channels to this thing, right? Remember your channel one is actually connected to your 61 input on the board and your channel two is connected to your 62 input on the board. So whatever you program IC1 and IC2 over here, that is what channel one and channel two are gonna do over here. So you can have start and pedestrian, open and close, uh, things like that. So you just would push the only button on the Equal board, SW1 one time, you get single flashing, that's the remote. Remember, you can check out remote programming right up here on this link. Squeeze both buttons at the same time. That is stating I got the hidden button correct. And then click the button you'd like to use, fast flash, it has saved this button as my channel one. Now, I wanna program channel two. Let it time out. Once it's done, you would push this button twice. One, two. All right, once you push it twice, you get the double flash, again with the hidden button. Squeeze both buttons at the same time. It's seeing it, let go. Program the second button. It took it, and now it'll double flash until it times out. All right, once it times out, Take a look at the screen. If you remember, button one is programmed to 61. So I got a start command. I don't know if you saw that real quick. Now button two 
is programmed to channel two or 62. If you notice, it says open there every time I click the button. All right, so we program channel one and channel two off of the remote. And I do believe I'm gonna ask my counterpart here, Roberto, to delete all remotes. That is just what? Push and hold the button for 10 seconds? Correct. Yeah, so you would just need to push and hold the same button to program for 10 seconds if you wanna delete everything and start again. Now, quick last tip. For whatever reason, if you did program remotes to here, you wanna delete them completely. And again, check out this link of how to delete all remotes from the control board. Once you've done that, go back and make sure it is only programmed to your Equosol board. Uh, remember, there might be a little chart out there showing how many uh, cycles you get per day. You just multiply that number in the chart by 10. So if it's 10, it'll be times 10. You get 100 uh, without any other charging before you run out, of, uh, run out of juice. I believe that is all I got for this. I hope it was informative. Uh, if anything else, leave your comments below. We'd like to hear it and know how we can do better. Thank you so much.